Yes, Les Nebone is my name from Education Services Australia. And um, and I manage the Australian Education Vocabularies. And I suppose as far as that seven point uh, terms of reference goes, this is uh, a use case of how vocabularies are applied. Uh, Quick overview. Um, I'm going to start off by talking about the role that vocabularies have played at Education Services as a sort of a change management tool. Um, We're going to look at the the evolution of using vocabularies in terms of uh, using or starting to use identifiers as well as uh, textual labels and then how they evolved into something else that we're all very excited about these days. Um, I will look at one more sort of sophisticated linked data application, which is about something to do with uh, curriculum subjects and uh, information resources. And, um, and I'll finish off with uh, a couple of reflections on things that, you know, maybe we uh, did well or things we'd like to do, uh, but are having a bit of trouble with. Um, okay, so, and uh, here's the obligatory uh, look at a, Education Services Australia. We are a, um, well, we're a service provider to uh, um, primary and secondary schools in particular. We provide information resources and websites. We're more or less a publisher. Uh, Here's a quick look at some of um, our services. I'd like to say that all of these services were employing controlled vocabularies. Um, Unfortunately, I cannot say that, but um, we'll we'll, uh, look a little bit at Scootle uh, towards the end of this um, presentation. But, uh, okay, the Australian Education Vocabularies uh, number about a dozen vocabularies, but the one that everyone knows the the most well is called the Schools Online Thesaurus, or SCOT. Um, And I'm going to focus on this vocabulary partly because it's a vocabulary that ESA actually has compiled itself and owns. We also host vocabularies on behalf of other organisations, but this one we built from the ground up. And also, Scott is, um, it's very feature rich and it's employed in some fairly sophisticated um, applications. It's also been around for a long time. So there's an interesting story about its evolution. Um, And I'll just draw attention to the word online. In in some ways, it's it's a bit of an unfortunate acronym we have and we're sort of stuck with it. Uh, Because people often think that the online refers to the kind of resources that we describe with Scott. Like Scott was designed to to describe online resources. Well, that's not exactly what it means. All it really means is that when we published Scott for the first time in 2004, we published it on the web and we've never printed it. That's really all it means. It's it's a thesaurus that is online. we, we do indeed describe uh, some online resources. Uh, back in 2004, learning objects were all the rave in school education. The term learning objects doesn't get used so much now, but they're more or less interactive content that might include some deliberate de- learning design or some uh, dedicated curriculum outcomes or it might even include an assessment uh, task or something like this. Um, and that was uh, all the rage 10 years ago and Scott was designed um, partly with uh, describing these resources in mind. It's difficult to find a symbol for uh, interactivity. We happen to use a cube on one of our websites, so I've used it here. But Scott is also used to describe offline resources. And if you, walk, if you look into um, any one of about 95% of the school libraries in Australia, you will find printed materials on shelves that have been catalogued with the school's online thesaurus. So that's actually where its widest uptake is. Um, it's actually still, um, I think print materials still make up about 70% of school libraries in Australia. Um, more recently, well, ESA is uh, increasingly in the business of um, cataloguing and publishing what we call open education resources or OER, which is um, really a euphemism for we're broke. 
Um, we don't really have the same resources we used to have to design interactive content. Um, but, uh, but this means that we uh, do a lot with uh, sources of uh, um, Creative Commons content and particularly um, repurposing content that you'll find in the, in the galleries, libraries, archives and, um, and museums. Um, so I want to talk a bit about the, the curriculum and Scott, but before I do, I want to go back to say about um, 2005 and just look at a, um, a, a basic problem that we had at Education Services Australia. And that was about how to manage um, change in a thesaurus with our, um, with our content. And um, we had designed a content management system and that understood how to ingest a thesaurus uh, in a format that we also designed. So we have a nice convenient closed system here. And um, with the content management system, we would publish education resource metadata that included terms from the school's online thesaurus. And so that's all working well. And when we added new terms to Scott, that didn't break anything. But of course, eventually, when we got past our sort of growth period, we weren't just adding new terms to Scott, we were changing some of the terms in Scott. We were, make, we were updating terms. And when, when we did this, we found that, well, that meant that some of our records had terms that were no longer valid. So we had a clean up task to do. Um, I'll just take an example. Uh, here's a term ecology. At some point in the evolution of Scott, we changed that term to ecosystems. And um, I know that some of you will want to fight with me about this. Um, and it's, it, it's, there are many controversial examples. I'll just make two quick points about this. And that, and that is, that as a matter of policy in Scott, we prefer to use the names of things and processes, uh, materials, etc., rather than the names of the disciplines that somehow govern them or study them. Um, and th the other point that I'll make is that in a thesaurus, or, or perhaps even in language generally, um, I don't think that there are any true equivalences. There are um, ra rather we make we make equivalent relationships within a community of practice. And, that, and that's exactly what we did. So we changed the preferred term to ecosystems, but we retained ecology as a non-preferred term. And by doing that, it meant that we could actually do our cleanup tasks uh, a little more easier. We can do a global change for any record to contain the label ecology, we change that to ecosystems. So everything was working fine, but everything didn't work fine forever. Um, so what if we uh, what if we retire or what if we change a term um, like ice but we want to have two replacement terms it's not so simple um, we can't do the same um, cleanup task and so in order to solve this problem we had a look at our metadata standard again and we realized that we were populating our metadata with labels but there was another subfield called identifier um, the metadata standard, by the way, is called IEEE LOM or Learning Object Metadata, and I, I don't recommend it, but um, that's just the metadata scheme context, which I think is significant, and I'll talk about that again a bit later. And so we discovered that we could be putting identifiers in. Well, where were we going to get, where were we going to get identifiers? Well, it turns out we already had identifiers in the software that we used to manage our thesaurus. And that software was called Multitest. Um, we don't use that anymore, but um, Multitest was uh, churning out an identifier every time we created a new term. We were just ignoring it. As far as we were concerned, the, uh, the term was the, the primary data. But um, we started um, exporting these IDs with um, these labels because we knew that it was going to help us do our, um, it was going to help us validate changes in our systems and also the systems used by our stakeholders. Um, and so uh, I, there was a kind of a change of thinking that came with this and we stopped talking about terms. Um, we started talking about labels rather than terms to emphasize that these were uh, an attribute of something else. We were really, and I think today what I actually manage 
is uh, is identifiers. I don't manage labels anymore. I manage identifiers, and the labels are one of the things that I have to deal with. Um, so those uh, later on, those um, identifiers became URIs that um, we're all familiar with now, and. Um, I mean, I, and I suppose that the, the the primary use case for doing this is that um, anyone who's using these concepts or these vocabularies can do so and validate their data from the web anytime they like. Um, I'll just put that in simple terms because I think that is really the main return on investment there, as is the um, the uh, being able to manage change um, by um, distributing identifiers. Um, okay, so that's, um, that's a fairly simple story about what, um, about uh, the role of vocabularies in managing change and um, of course we're all interested in more sophisticated applications of linked data or URIs and um, so I'll just quickly point out a, a few other things that we do now and what, what we can do is that we can, we can store our preferred and non-preferred labels. It's actually easier now for us to store more preferred labels in other languages if, if we choose to, and we have, we have done that, and that's a work in progress. Um, we, we can even support references to media such as images, which provides a concept with uh, lots of scope and clarity. Of course, a picture tells a thousand words. Um, um, but then, of course, the um, linking to other vocabularies. So now that we're publishing URIs, we can create machine-readable links to uh, vocabularies such as DBpedia. Um, the second one, Library of Congress. I think if you resolve that URI, you actually come up with um, um, ecology, not ecosystems. But that's not a problem for me because as far as I'm concerned, we're linking a concept to a concept, not a label to a label. And, um, and the, uh, the third example, the Australian curriculum, and this is a little different. We, we don't link Scott to the Australian curriculum. The Australian curriculum links to Scott. In other words, the Australian curriculum uses Scott to describe its own uh, curriculum objectives. And um, this, is, this is a very interesting uh, use case. Traditionally, vocabularies have been used to describe, I suppose, what you might call information resources or, or, or bibliographic resources, if you like. And, um, and in this scenario, we've got something different. A curriculum is like a sort of a framework or an organising an organizing framework. And we've used a vocabulary to describe the Australian curriculum. And that opens up some really interesting um, possibilities. Um, so then here's, here's that scenario where we're using something like Schools Online Thesaurus to describe some information resources. But if we're using Scott to also describe the Australian curriculum, all of a sudden we can make an inference from those resources to the Australian curriculum. Um, this relationship supports the idea of um, uh, data mining. You've got a, a database of information resources that are tagged with Scott or even just tagged with terms that are like Scott terms. You could mine that collection and make inferences about how it might relate to the Australian curriculum. And that's something that we're actually doing at Education Services Australia with our um, discovery um, portals. Um, but it's a principle that I think could be applied elsewhere. You've got some kind of framework, whether it's a policy framework or some kind of uh, some kind of organising principle, to the extent that you describe it with something like a subject vocabulary, you're making it uh, easier to align resources with that framework. We actually are doing this in a system called Scootle. Um, anyone can visit Scootle and if you use the, uh, use the Browse by Australian Curriculum feature, that's actually the, um, what's happening under the hood when you look at various content descriptions, and there are more detailed ones than you can see on the screen, you'll get, um, you'll get results with resources that contain those Scott terms that match the Scott terms in the Australian curriculum. 
Um, so you, anyone can have a play with that. You do need a login to look at the details of a resource, but you don't need a login to browse results and just have a look at how that's working. Um, just um, uh, a bit about um, identifiers. I guess this is a kind of a kind of a lesson learned. Um, I mentioned before that we um, we retained our identifiers from our old multi-test system and we preserved them in the HTTP URIs. And we did that because it helped with some backwards compatibility issues. Um, but uh, some other approaches to identify patterns, well, sometimes um, the preferred label is used as the suffix of an identifier, as in this uh, ecology example. It's a very, it's in, my, in my opinion, a very bad idea to use pref labels as um, identifiers because, as I've already described, once you change the preferred label, the identifier becomes, uh, I, I suppose it becomes misleading. Um, also, you have to choose a language. So if you've got any interest in um, storing labels in other languages, then the identifier becomes almost um, uh, culturally insensitive <laughs> or something like this. Um, the second example here is a kind of a hierarchy approach. And this is a different kind of um, another example of including semantics in your identifier. Um, there are tra is a, is a trade-off, including your semantics in your identifier, because you're introducing some rigidity. And um, so you could, uh, but with Australian curriculum does this, and it's, it's not a bad idea to have identifiers that people can quote in a sort of a human readable context. And uh, I, for example, quote Australian curriculum identifiers in, um, in tweets, because um, they're easy to, um, to communicate in that environment. Um, then, you know, the third approach is make your identifier completely opaque. And I think this is the, the really purest one. And you're really, you're really forcing systems to go and resolve that, um, that, I, that uh, URI to find out what, label, what the label is. Um, you, can, you can have your cake and eat it too, though. Um, we discovered that it's possible to retain... Uh, a kind of a human readable or semantic identifier within a, within a concept using this property called SCOS notation. And SCOS notation is a little bit like a sub-identifier. And you can go even further and um, create some rules under a server that respects that identifier as an alternative suffix. So that it rewrites to your, your main identifier, if we can call it that. And... Um, we started doing that at ESA some time ago, um, but now actually Pool Party, which is the software we use, uh, does this out of the box now. Um, if you create notations in Pool Party, it will create URIs, that alternative URIs that rewrite to the, the main URI. Um, I haven't really been watching the clock, but I've only got one more slide, so uh, I hope that's okay. Um, I, I suppose, the um, the other thing that I'll mention is that our our evolution in vocabularies, sort of technology or um, standards, as in publishing URIs and using RDF, was um, we sort of went ahead of our metadata standards, and we're we're actually still stuck using metadata standards that don't really support URIs very well, and there's been a bit of shoehorning going on. We've got systems that are based on standards like IEEE LOM. And of course, we've, we, we, we play with traditional library metadata like the MARC standard. And uh, particularly MARC is interesting because you look at what the Library of Congress is doing in terms of trying to evolve the MARC standard so that it does support URIs. There's quite a lot of work going on there, but it's been going on for a long time. It's very difficult work. Um, so I suppose there's something there about if you are in the lucky situation of being able to start um, publishing the uh, URIs and you don't have a metadata standard adopted already, you need to look for one that really does support them properly. Um, uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a quagmire actually.
And um, okay, well, that, that's actually all I've got.